Good morning. Welcome to our special service on Sunday the 4th of October 2020. It's great to see you and here we are for our Harvest Thanksgiving as we're going to celebrate God's goodness uh, in creation and all the wonderful things that we have to give thanks for. So a very, very warm welcome. Let's see who we've got uh, joining us this morning already. So, hello everybody. <laughs> hello there. Hello, Esther in Kildare. That's lovely to see you with us today. Audrey and Jackie in a wet townland of Gortlowski. Indeed, it is wet here as well in the Glebe. Hello, Howard. Uh, hello, Lee and all the Graham family. Good morning, Carol and Peter in County Down. And Kathleen and Kathleen. Doreen and Adrian. And all with you and Irene and Olive and John. Absolutely. Well, it's brilliant to have you with us today and I hope all is going fairly well with you, uh, wherever you may be. Great. It looks to me like the picture is not very good this morning. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. So apologies if there's a very um, grainy kind of appearance to the uh, to the live stream picture today. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. I think as far as I know, we're streaming the same way as usual. But if it is, uh, if the picture is not very good, you may not be able to see very well this beautiful display behind me. We've got the red hot pokers. We've got some apples from the rectory orchard right here. And uh, Richard's done us another lovely picture on a harvest theme. And so it's great to have all of those. Now, don't forget you can uh, press the like button and the share button to uh, let people know that you're viewing this broadcast today and not just to let them know for the sake of knowing but so they may be able to tune in and join us as well which would be very very welcome so also we're delighted to see Isabel and John Joe Linda Dorothy and David and the Trimbles great fantastic to have each and every one of you Excuse me while I have a little bit of coffee just to keep me going. So it's 5 to 11, so we've got a couple of minutes just to have a chat. Uh, so please do send in any comments. Hi, Valerie. Good to see you as well next door. That's fantastic. The nice thing with the comments is that we can greet one another. So if you see some familiar name popping up, you can always say hello and just send in a quick little message to let them know that you're tuned in and that you've noticed that they are there. <laughs> well done. Well done. Great stuff. Anna, nice to have you with us as well. And everyone with you. And the Harrisons, Vincent and Heather. Good to see you. And Ali and Peter and Iona and Zoe. Fabulous. Hi, Dorothy and Nigel. Hi, Richard. Oh, the video quality is good, apparently, where you are in Duncan Ely. So that's all right. It must just be me right here in <laughs> right next to the thing where my video is coming through a bit poor. And I'm going to see if I can uh, just amend that now. Great stuff. So don't forget, as I say, to hit the share button. And uh, that's always a good thing to do. Ah, yes, I think I've got it coming through a wee bit better now. Yeah. No. Uh, who else is? Who else are we pleased? to have with us today as we're up, I see, to uh, 56 people with us. Isn't that terrific? Terrific. Very good to see you. Very, very good. You never just quite know with Facebook what's going to happen next. But here we go. Aha, that's the right button to click. Yes. Okay. 
Wow, lots of people are getting tuned in now. Phil Marks to everybody. Vivian and Milton. Helen. Roland. Sheila and the family. Nigel and Olive. Thomas in Dublin. The other locked down county. Thomas in Crumlin. It's good to see you. Muriel. Hi, Rolly and Helen. Robert and Mandy. Joan and Jimmy and all the family. Margaret. Mary. Teresa and Albert, Gillian and Albert, Elizabeth and Kilkeel, where it's wet to, and Barbara and Noel. Awesome stuff. That is just great. Okay, one minute to 11. Hi, Jennifer and Philip and all the family there in Rosnaula. Excellent stuff. Well, uh, let me just begin on to a few announcements, okay, while we're just getting started. So I'm going to first of all pop up, uh, if I can find any of these things. Here we are. Uh, pop up a quick little advertisement. I know it may be a bit tricky to read, um, but... You can find that on our page and you can share it as well. And it has just a mention of things that are going on for all ages because at the minute, even though we're in our kind of lockdown, semi-lockdown situation, there is something going on for all different ages uh, at the moment. So, for example, for children, uh, together with the Methodists and Presbyterians, we've put together Kingdom Kids, which is a video um, Sunday school, okay? And there's going to be a video coming out every week. So you are really encouraged to um, take a look at that. You can find it on our Facebook and YouTube pages. For young people who are in secondary school age, there's Youth Alpha. And uh, John Montgomery is masterminding this. And it's a really great course. And it's happening on Sundays. And it begins tonight, 7.30. So if you want to be involved, then uh, john.montgomery at irishmethodist.org. Or get on to me and I'll put you on to him. And then a reminder that for the adults, uh, we have our coffee time on Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 o'clock. And our hope groups are Tuesdays and Fridays at 2 p.m. So that is really kind of in place of the mustard seed, but it's for anybody. You don't have to be a regular or a visitor at the mustard seed to take part in those. Uh, and they're happening via Zoom. So you'll need to get on to myself or Sandra and we'll get you tuned into that. And then a reminder of our online services. It's Sundays at 11, Wednesdays at 8 and Fridays at 1 p.m. Those are our regular times. Okay, also, um, obviously, it's Harvest Thanksgiving this week, so we're really glad to be able to have that. We're very sorry, in a way, that we're not having it in our churches, in our buildings, as had been planned. We would have been in Lohesk last weekend. We would have been in Donegal town this weekend, and there would have been a lot more than just this a uh, handful of red-hot pokers and a few apples. The church would have been normally uh, laden down with beautiful decorations, and we would have also had our Friday night harvest with a guest speaker and lovely supper and all of that, and we're missing it all, but we are giving thanks. And one of the great ways we can give thanks is in our giving. Um, all through the Bible, a way that people uh, express their gratitude to God is by giving to those who are in need. And always in our Harvest Thanksgiving services in the Donegal group of parishes, we take up an offering at the service and then we give it away. Um, and we give it always to something that's overseas, something to do with world need or mission. And this year we're going to give it to the uh, Beirut Appeal, so you remember the large explosion that happened there exactly two months ago, and there's still a huge amount of need for reconstruction and for medical help and for help with the trauma of that event and for help with those who have been bereaved and made homeless and so on. And we're going to send that through Tear Fund, which is a long established um, relief organization based on Christian uh, lines. And so um, if you are a member of Lahi or Donegal, then you'll have a special envelope and you can put your offering in that. And when we're able to uh, get together again, you can uh, drop that in or you can send it to the treasurer and we'll get those uh, special harvest offerings sent off for Lebanon. 
And then also closer to home, there's an opportunity to support the Donegal Town Food Bank. So this is an organisation that's run through the Family Resource Centre and it is helping uh, families that are short of the basic supplies. And uh, between Killybegs, all round through Donegal Town and down to Ballantra, they're currently helping 43 families with basic food supplies, people whose situation is such that they are in need of that help. And so you can drop off any tinned or boxed or dried foods at the mustard seed on Friday mornings. And if there's nobody in, you can just leave it on the doorstep. And there'll be a big box there and that'll be much appreciated and we'll get that all gathered up. We're going to have that open for the next uh, three weeks or so. And then when we've got it all gathered up, we're going to take it to the food bank. So that's another way you can help. Then final thing to say by way of announcements, of course, is that we're still here in Donegal on our level three restrictions. Um, which was set for three weeks. So in theory, until the 16th of October. So we definitely have this Sunday uh, without being in the church buildings and definitely Sunday the 11th. Then we will have to watch this space and see. We'll have to wait and see. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, I'm an optimist. So uh, let's hope that we're back into our church buildings soon. Uh, but it will depend on the restrictions. And as you know, the cases are rising really um exponentially at the moment in the country, including particularly in County Donegal. So it may be that we're not able to get back as soon as that. But watch this space. In the meantime, follow all the advice and keep to all the rules. Uh, don't have any parties. Do, uh, don't go for any unnecessary travel and congregating with people. But do keep uh, staying two metres apart washing your hands regularly and wearing the face mask in the places where that's appropriate to do. And pray, pray that soon we would be free from the virus and soon we would be back to much more like normal life and able to meet one another and pray for those who are isolated and alone and pray for those who are fearful. And let's pray also that we'll learn the lessons of this time and take the opportunities of this time because it is a, a moment of opportunity. So pray, pray, pray. Don't live in fear, but do live in faith and also be sensible. Okay, now, great, we've got a great number of people with us now. That's fantastic, we're at 92, so we're gonna get started. Don't, uh, don't change channel, because we're about to get going on worshiping the Lord together. David and Deirdre say hi, from Flower Hill. So does uh, Violet, down in Ross Cray, and Jennifer in Oma, Dorothy, Christina, and the others from the sunny Main Street. I doubt that a little bit, but that's lovely to know. Mabel, Irene, uh, the Huss family right here. Thomas, uh, Johnson, Elizabeth, Nora and Newton, William, Mark and the Harrens, David, Audrey, Deborah, Joyce, Tanya, Kathleen, Georgina, and uh, wonderful stuff. That's great. And Lynn and Mary and Brian and Barbara. Okay, now we've got some beautiful bits of music today and um, we have some lovely singing from Zara and Naomi, which we're going to share with you. So let's get started. But just before that, it's so important to give thanks, isn't it? And I mentioned that uh, last week and uh, I had a lovely response. I didn't get a lot of people sending in videos. In fact, I got one, but it's a beautiful one. So let's have this as our call to worship from our dear friends, the Leslies. Happy Gossip County Council. Thank you, Gossip for all that grows. Thank you, God, for the harvest and all living things. Isn't that great? Let's thank God indeed. And let's thank him by listening to For the Fruits of His Creation. Thanks be to God.
Thanks, Sarah, very much. Wasn't that great? Brilliant stuff. Let's have an opening prayer now as we continue to worship God. O Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we glorify Thee that Thou hast fulfilled to us Thy gracious promise that while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not fail. We bless Thee for the kindly fruits of the earth which Thou hast given for our use. Teach us, we beseech thee, to remember that it is not by bread alone that man doth live, and grant us evermore to feed on him who is the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, a quick quiz. And uh, very simple. (laughs) It's called Guess the Vegetable. Now, um, I don't know exactly how I came up with this idea, but here we are. Um, Send in a quick comment. Can you identify these four common and uncommon root vegetables? As we give thanks to God for all the wonderful food that we enjoy. So what do you think we've got there? All right, send in your comments. We've got number one, two three and four. We've got some great stuff there. This is the time of year for harvesting, isn't it? The time of year when we're digging up some of these lovely things from the ground and enjoying them. Okay, well done, well done. So let me tell you, first of all, number one, okay? Super easy in the top left corner there. That's potatoes. Easy as that. What's number two? What have we got up there, do you think? Yeah, something a little bit different. Those are sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Okay, very good. And um, number three. Can you recognize? I wonder if anybody know. Now, if you were in West Africa, you would be very familiar with these and probably eating them a lot of the time. They are... Yams. They're yams. Yeah. Okay. So pounded yam or mashed yam or fried yam. Delicious. And number four. Now, what do you think? Ah, interesting. Some people there say it's a turnip. Very close, but I believe it's actually a swede. Now, that's something you can think about over the rest of the day. When is a swede a swede and when is it a turnip? And what's the difference and how do you know which is which? I think it's a swede, but it could well be a turnip. I just googled it and that's what I got. Wouldn't it be lovely to have a nice soup with all of those things in it? That would be delicious if we could enjoy those. And, you know, the point of putting that up is that even the simplest foods, even what we think maybe is the kind of the boring food, the... Uh, the, the the potatoes, the yams, the, the bread, those kind of plain things. Think of how much has gone into producing those. Think of all the work that has happened to enable that potato crop to be grown. Think of that slice of bread that maybe you had for breakfast this morning and all that has happened through grain being planted and fertilized and the sun shining on it and the rain and being harvested and milled and baked into bread. Think of your humble spud, your potato, and how the similar kind of things have happened to it. And there's so much to be thankful to, thankful to God, who's over all of that amazing process. We're going to give thanks to him now by the song Jump Up and Down. When did you remember this one? I'm going to jump up and down, going to spin right around, going to praise your name forever. I'm going to shout out loud, going to deafen the crowd, going to send my praise to heaven. Okay? I'm going to jump up and down, going to spin right around, going to praise your name forever. I'm going to shout out loud, going to deafen the crowd, going to send my praise to heaven. Gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deafen the crowd, send my praise to heaven. I will run this race and I will never stop. I'll follow Jesus till the day I drop. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you've got 
got such a lot when you've got not a lot what be happy i'm gonna jump up and down gonna spin right around gonna praise your name forever i'm gonna shout out loud gonna deafen the crowd gonna send my praise to heaven i'm gonna jump up and down gonna spin right around gonna praise your name forever i'm gonna shout out loud gonna deafen the crowd send my praise to heaven I will run this race and I will never stop I'll follow Jesus till the day I drop I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me When you've got such a lot, when you've got not a lot, what? Be happy Well, that reminds us of a really important principle that we can be happy whatever we have and we can give thanks to God in all circumstances because we learn through him to be content. Let's praise God now in a, uh, uh, by listening to our reading. Our first reading is from Psalm 65 and Sandra is going to be reading that for us now. So let's listen to our psalm. Psalm 65. What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. We fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers. All of us must come to you. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. What joy for those you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts. What festivities await us inside your holy temple. You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds, O God our Saviour. You are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. You formed the mountains by your power and armed yourself with mighty strength. You quieted the raging oceans and their pounding waves. You silenced the shouting of the nations. Those who live at the ends of the earth Stand in awe at your wonders. For from where the sun rises to where it sets, you inspire shouts of joy. You take care of the earth and water it, making it rich and fertile. The river of God has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grains, for you have ordered it so. You drench the ploughed ground with rain, melting the clods and levelling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless its abundant crops. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks of sheep and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. Ah, thanks, Sandra. Brilliant. Recorded uh, yesterday in the sunshine. Let's sing again. We're going to have this lovely harvest hymn. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. scatter the good seed on the land but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand he sends the snow in winter the warmth to swell the grain the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above none thank the lord oh thank the lord for all his love he only is the maker of all things near and far 
paints the wayside flower, he lights the evening star. The wind and waves obey him, by him the birds are fed, much more to us his children. Gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. We thank you then, O oh Father, for all things bright and good. The seed time and the Accept the praise we offer for all your love imparts, and that which you most welcome, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above, then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for around us are sent from heaven above then thank the Lord oh thank the Lord for all his love thank you Lord our Heavenly Father indeed as we come before you now in this harvest season we give you our thanks and praise and we ask that now as we listen to your word once again as we receive the good food of the Holy Scriptures that it would become alive to us in Jesus name. Amen. So just one uh, second reading, New Testament reading, which I'm going to read to you now as I also just want to welcome everyone who may have joined us over these last few minutes and maybe haven't had a chance to say hello to you. So I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 17, beginning at verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called uh, out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And uh, as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God? Except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, Lord, grant that your word may so take root in our hearts that as we live in thankfulness and praise, we may bring forth fruit to your glory. Amen. I don't want to add very much to the readings uh, today because really they speak for themselves. There in uh, Luke chapter 17, Jesus heals 10 men. But he notices that out of the 10, one came back to give thanks. Thankfulness seems to be rare. It was in Jesus' time. Has that changed? Thankfulness, a thankful heart seemed then to be rare. I wonder, is it today? And then in Psalm 65, which Sandra read for us there, a beautiful psalm. And I love the psalms of harvest time. When we have our harvest Thanksgiving, we generally uh, have a psalm. And uh, we almost always have either Psalm 100, uh, Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his face with songs of joy. 
Or we have Psalm 126. Uh, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. And I'm almost singing it there in my head. Or we have Psalm 65. Uh, Praise is due to you. And we often sing it to this beautiful chant. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion. To you that answer prayer shall vows be paid. To you shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When our misdeeds prevail against us, you will purge them away. And so on. And it's absolutely beautiful. And it's one of the highlights of the Harvest Thanksgiving evenings for me when we sing those wonderful psalms. And perhaps um, perhaps I'll do that quietly with myself later on this evening. But in this psalm, it's so full of thanks. It's so rich and joyful. And the images and the pictures are just piled up again and again. Um, and it's so, so many layers of thanksgiving. In this beautiful psalm, there's thanksgiving to God for his goodness in creation and in preserving and in giving us the things that we need Uh, in the past, because the psalmist goes right back to creation. He says, you set firm the mountains, you formed the mountains by your power, you stilled the roaring and raging of the seas. And the whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where the morning dawns and where the evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. So there's this wonderful thanksgiving for God's past goodness in making this world and how brilliant it is. And as I've often said before, one of the very best things that you can do for your heart and for your soul is to watch wildlife programs on television. When you see some like magnificent whales in the ocean or some intricate butterfly uh, here in this country or some vividly colored um, bird uh, in the jungles of the Amazon or uh, fantastic uh, bees or other insects doing amazing things. And it's good for your soul to be reminded of God's wonderful creation and how abundantly and beautifully he has made it. But the psalmist then, David, also praises God for his goodness in the present. How year after year after year, God fulfills that wonderful promise that seed time and harvest will not fail. How he sends the rain, you visit the earth and water it. You enrich it abundantly. You drench the furrows. You smooth out the ridges, you soften the ground with showers and bless its increase. So give thanks to God even on a rainy day like today because we need the rain, don't we? And we need the sun. And actually what a good summer we have had with so much sunshine and warmth and at different times rain as well. And I think it has been a good year. Although it has been a tough year because of COVID, it has been a good year and we have been able to gather. I say we, I mean you, the farmers, have been able to gather the the crops, to bring in the hay and the silage, to bring the turf down from the hills and the bog, to have the animals fed, to have the sheep and the cattle looked after and cared for. And what a wonderful job has been done and how we need to give thanks to our farmers and to God for giving them to us and all the work that they do. But also the psalmist looks to the future, how you crown the year with your goodness. The carts overflow with abundance. The valleys shall stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing and the meadows shall be clothed with flocks of sheep. So there's faith here as well, looking to the future with hope and with thanksgiving. So when you sit down to your food today or any day, give thanks. Even when you think of just a simple little apple, what amazing processes went on to allow this to happen, for that tree to grow, for that blossom to form and to be pollinated, 
for the apple then to grow and to swell on the branch and to be picked and to be eaten. What amazing uh, processes took place. When you sit down to your beef or your lamb or your fish or your chicken or whatever you're going to be eating today or the beautiful vegetables that you're going to tuck into, give thanks to God. It's all from him. It's all from him. What a blessing. So we give thanks to God for what we call his common grace. That is the good things that he gives to everybody, to every person, the food and the uh, water that we need. But also in this psalm, there's praise to God for not only his common grace, but what we would call his saving grace. Or his, we also talk about his general uh, goodness and his special goodness. His saving grace. And at the beginning of that psalm, it said, Praise is due to you, our God in Zion. To you who answer prayer, all vows will be paid. And when we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our guilt, our transgressions. Happy are those you choose and bring near to your courts. We are satisfied with the blessings of your house, even of your holy temple. Yes, you see, it's good to have God as our creator. And it's very good to have God as our saviour and as our father and as our friend. So we thank God not only for his common grace. And that common doesn't mean to say that, that, that that's something that's not important. It means common as in for everybody. It's, it's common to all. His, his grace and creation is shared with everybody. But to those who come to him, to those who believe and trust and surrender their lives to him and those who uh, accept what Jesus is offering in his death on the cross and in his resurrection from the grave, to those who come to Christ and receive the Lord Jesus, he gives that special grace of forgiveness of sins. He cleanses away our guilt and our shame. He gives us his Holy Spirit to dwell within And we have the blessings of fellowship and friendship with God and with fellow believers around the world. I wonder, have you had that joy of coming to know God's special saving grace and receiving the gift of his Holy Spirit within you? Well, that's a great prayer that we could have because today it is good to give thanks It's good to give thanks. It's good to have an attitude of gratitude and to always be thankful. And you know, that's good because it's fitting for God to be thanked. And it's good because it's good for us as well. You know, time and again, it has been shown in studies that people who are more thankful are more happy, that they have greater uh, mental health, that the more we complain, the more it drags us down. And the more we give thanks, the more it lifts us up. So it's such a healthy thing. So children, be thankful. Give thanks. Uh, Don't forget to say thank you. Even when you sit sit down to your food, give thanks to God. And by the way, don't forget to give thanks and say thank you to your parents as well and other people in your family. Let's make sure that we are in the habit of being really thankful. So young people, be thankful. Older people, be thankful. Do you know, it can be that as you get older and as you begin to find more difficulties in life and more challenges and things like the lockdown and so on have have curtailed your freedoms a lot. And I was talking to someone just yesterday who said, I feel so useless. There's nothing I can do. Just have to sit at home. Well, let's be thankful. Be thankful and, uh, and pray. A wonderful thing you can do. You're never useless if you pray. That's a great thing to do. And middle-aged people, I'm not letting you off the hook as well. Our lives can be so busy, can't we, that we forget to stop and give thanks. So do that today. Take some time to stop and simply thank God for the good things. So quickly, we run on to asking him for things, and that's perfectly fine to do as well. But first, give thanks. I am going to share a little bit later um, a little craft which um, 
children might like to do and grown-ups might like to do as well. And it's a prayer pyramid, okay? And you build it into this lovely pyramid and you can use it to remind you to say sorry, please, but also thank you. Thank you, God, for the good things that you do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, indeed, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your goodness in creation, for all the wonderful things that we have. At this harvest time, we want to praise you for them. But we thank you for your goodness in salvation as well. We thank you for the seed who was planted and bore fruit, the Lord Jesus Christ. He spoke of himself as a seed which died to bear a crop. And we thank you that he died and rose again for us. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to listen to the Harvesty hymn and the creation hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Sorry, sound problems again. Hit the wrong button. We're going to affirm our faith now using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. We'll begin with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And a collect for this Sunday, the 17th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for this harvest time. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for all who serve us at this time, and all who we give thanks for at harvest, for our farmers, for those who support the farmers, for the vets, for those in agricultural uh, supplies, for those involved in the food processing and distribution, for those who work in our fishing out on the seas and here in Donegal Bay. We thank you for the harvest of natural resources, for the wind power and the hydroelectric and for all the ways in which the natural uh, energy all around us is used for good. And we thank you for the harvest of our people. We thank you for the talents, abilities and skills of all people which can be used for good. Heavenly Father, we give you our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's pray. Let's pray for the needs of this time. Heavenly Father, we pray for the coronavirus situation. We pray for those working on the front line in healthcare and behind the scenes in research. We pray for all who have been infected, for all who are undergoing treatment and for those who have lost loved ones. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to have mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray today, Heavenly Father, for our young people. We pray for those in school. We pray for those in college. We pray for all who are affected by the mistakes over results. And we pray for all those who are confused about their future. We also remember the elderly, those who are isolated and alone, those who may be fearful, those who may be missing, seeing relatives and loved ones. And we pray, Father, for all who are bereaved. This time we particularly remember Chloe and Rachel Love on the loss of Chloe's father, Raymond. We pray for his wider family circle. We remember all who are in need of God's healing touch at this time. And we pray for the ongoing mission of the church through our online ministry, through our ministry in person, 
through the giving to our harvest appeals for Lebanon and for the Donegal Food Bank. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Praise and thanksgiving, Father, we offer another beautiful harvest hymn. Praise and thanksgiving, Father, we offer for all things living you have made good, harvests of sown fields, fruits of the Hay from the mown fields, blossom and wood. Lord, bless the labor we bring to serve you, that with our neighbor we may be fed. Sowing or tilling, we would work with you, harvesting daily bread. Father, providing food for your children, your wisdom guiding, teach us a share, one with another, so that rejoicing, sister and brother, may know your care. Then will your blessing reach every people, each one confessing your gracious hand. When you are reigning, no one will hunger, your love sustaining, fruitful the land. I want to thank Naomi and Zara for those wonderful hymns. And we have just one more we're going to finish with shortly. And I want to thank um, Hannah and uh, Shona and Polly for their beautiful video as well. And uh, Sandra. And to thank all of you for being here and for joining in this time of worship together in thanksgiving to God for the gifts of the harvest and above all for his gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget to join us at any of our other online events, which are all outlined on our website and Facebook page. But let's uh, pray for God's blessing now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. And I'm going to leave you with great is thy faithfulness. Let's remember that whatever the circumstances, despite all the challenges of these times, God is faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Great.